Mm-hmm. Hello there and welcome to Living Stones Church on the internet. It's Sunday morning. So it's um, hello from Jeannie and it's hello from Paul. Good morning and welcome to Living Stones Church on the internet. It's lovely to have your company with us this morning. And today we are looking at another Bible character whose name is Mordecai. So Mordecai was a Jew who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the Babylonian captivity, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, orchestrated. Yes. So Mordecai had a cousin named Hadasha, whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. Esther 2 verse 7. So we see that this young woman's name was originally Hadassah. Yes. Which means myrtle, the myrtle tree in in Israel. But her name was changed to the Babylonian name, meaning Esther, which which means star. It comes from Ishtar, the, the you know the Babylonian um, god that was. Um, known as a star is quite a history to that actually and it seems we get our current word Easter from Esther so you can see Easter Esther it sounds similar it sounds similar doesn't it yes Yes. so Esther's parents had died and Mordecai had become her adopted father and played a significant part in her life So running parallel to this story is King Xerxes who ruled over 127 providences from India to Kush. During a banquet he commanded men to bring before him Queen Vashti. I command it. Bring bring the Queen. Wearing her royal robes and crown in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles for she was lovely to look at but when the attendants delivered the king's command queen vashti she refused to see him then the king came became furious and burned with anger oh dear (laughs) yeah so the the officials weren't happy either because they said the all the women in the whole territory will be doing the same thing yes You've got to set an example here. So they put the king under pressure. And so cutting a long story short at this point, a search was started for another queen. And many young girls came from across the land and they were brought to the palace to go through a one year of beauty treatments. Gosh, that's a long time, isn't it? It sure is, yeah. (laughs) Well, Esther wasn't just beautiful on the outside, but she was beautiful on the inside also. And she was close to Mordecai and would listen to him. And Esther became queen after winning this beauty contest. And she was now called Queen Esther of Persia. Now, Esther had not revealed her people or her family or where she was from. For Mordecai had charged her not to reveal it. So we see that Esther was an obedient girl, willing to take instruction, and that Mordecai was a wise man, uh, cousin to Esther yeah. and he was kind of like an, an uncle but he does yeah. say cousin doesn't cousin, he? Cousin yes in Esther chapter 2. I yeah believe. okay so he gave good counsel to his uh, charge uh, who was um, Esther and in a similar way 
Jesus also looks after us and instructs us and counsels us because Mordecai had said, Esther, be wise now. Yeah. Yes. Watch what you're saying. Don't tell people where you are from. And she obeyed. And so Jesus also tells us, Behold, I send you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, as serpents, th therefore be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So, be wise is there, is the instruction from Jesus there. Paul said um, something similar. He said, I did not burden you, nevertheless, being crafty, Paul mm. calls himself, I caught you with guile. So here we see Paul taking on Jesus' words to the Corinthians. He was being as, as harmless as a dove and yet as wise as a serpent. And he tells them, I did not burden you because I was crafty and I caught you with guile. So um, we see Paul here being um, uh, wise as Jesus tells us all to be. And Mordecai I told Esther, be wise. And we have to, don't we, brothers and sisters? We need to be wise in the world that we live in. Watch out what we say. You have pearls, watch where you put them, Jesus said. Yes, that's very true. So here is an account of the Apostle Paul's behaviour and the kind intentions he had towards the Corinthians. And we see the character of Paul here, faithful minister of the gospel, yet wise. Yes. We do not dispense with our mind when we become Christians. We have a transformed mind but it's still a mind. It's still a mind. It's yeah. still a mind, yeah. <laughs> so we should use it. We should use it for good. And Mordi Ki's ability to read the situation was given to him by God. Good point. Mordi Ki, yeah. he read the situation well. He certainly and did. And we, we need to be similar, don't we, brothers and sisters? Read the situation. Understand. Be wise. Yes, Jesus too was alert and wise. And we read that despite the many questions aimed at Jesus, we get to the point where no one could say a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions, says Matthew 22, verse 46. Because Jesus' words are sharp. Yes, they are. These are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged Sword, Revelation 2, verse 12. And also in Revelation, repent therefore, otherwise I will come to you and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So we see this picked up in Revelation, although we'd, we hear of it in other places too. Jesus will smite the earth with the uh, uh, sword that comes from his mouth. Okay, so Mordecai was a caring cousin yes. to Esther, very caring, concerned. Every day, Mordecai paced in front of the court of the women's quarters to learn of Esther's welfare and what was happening to her. Yes, and Mordecai had taken Esther under his wing and loved her. He had the good qualities of someone who cares. And Mordecai had a big heart, and we see this from the daily visits. He was committed towards her and concerned, and that affected his daily routine. And in a similar way, we, we, in this story, the Lord looks at us also, just as the prodigal son's father who saw his son coming to him. 
while the son was still a long way off, the father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, he threw his arms around him and kissed him. And we read that in Luke 15. So in that way, Mordecai going every day to the wall because he couldn't get in the, no, the um, enclosure of the where all the queens, you know, yeah. the harem was. But he wanted to know how was Esther, how was she? Get get past this message on, please. And they would pass messages to each other. So we see that's like the father looks yes. for us also. You the know, closeness yeah the holy well. spirit's watching daily um or, or it's a bit like adam and eve who the lord god went looking for in the cool of the day calling where are you and so the the lord um he loves us and we also have that same love and compassion for those around us don't we the love of christ compels us and and we see this love in more decay yes and separated from esther but yet love held them together many waters cannot quench love rivers cannot sweep it away if one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love it would be utterly scorned so uh, the walls of the, of the harem in persia couldn't stop love no love is powerful and so we see why the why paul the apostle tells us that the greatest is love and we read for a second time that esther had kept secret her family background and nationality just as mordecai had told her to do for she continued to follow Mordecai's instructions as she had done when he was bringing her up. And we read this in Esther 2, verse 20. Now, because Mordecai stayed close to the king's gate, the wall there, um, at the palace, uh, he was able to uncover a plot against the king yes you could say he was in the right place at the right time really which shows us the importance of following the way of love if if mordecai hadn't have been there he wouldn't have heard that plot True. so mordecai found out about this plot against the king and he got a message to queen esther who in turn reported it to the king giving credit to mordecai so that was a good thing that happened because Mordecai stayed close to the king's palace, but it also put him in another situation. All the royal officials at the king's gate knelt down and paid honour to an official called Haman, for the king had commanded this concerning him, but Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honour. He told the people that he was a Jew, meaning that he only bowed down to God alone. So the royal officials at the king's gate asked Mordecai, why do you disobey the king's command? Day after day they spoke to him, but he refused to comply. So... The act of bowing down in some countries in those days was regarded as an act of homage performed to a king as if he were a divine being, uh, like an incarnation of a god. So therefore, when Haman said he, w he was a Jew, they, he, the people knew he wouldn't bow down to anyone but the Lord God and we read now when Haman that's the official saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor he was enraged now let's notice here how the devil works because we may have thought that with 99.9% .9 of the people bowing down to Haman that he would be satisfied with that 
you know, but even with all those people bowing down to him, he couldn't settle because his heart was so proud it wouldn't let him settle. No, and a proud heart brings no peace with it. And this is what we read in Isaiah 48 verse 22. There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. I, I know of someone who was, um, who was a musician and they were playing in a big stadium. Like, well, it wasn't a stadium, but it was a big venue. It was 15,000 or so people. Big. big, yeah. And But after the show, he, he was really upset because there was one person who wasn't there. Oh, right. He wasn't happy with the 15,000 people. and just He wanted one particular person to be there who oh. didn't turn up that night Amazing. for some reason, yeah. So I, I thought, isn't that amazing? It, it yeah. ruined the whole show for him. Wow. And this was the position Haman was in. Yeah. And this is how the devil works. He bugs us. Just a little thing there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Haman could have thought, ah, oh, Mordecai, you know, just leave him alone. He's, just, you know, he's just probably a crazy person or whatever. But he didn't. And and when we get into that state, um, you, you know um, Herod's wife, Her Her Herodias, she was similar, wasn't she? She was. Because she got what she wanted. She got Herod, but she had this um, unsettled feeling for about John the Baptist because he had spoken out against her. Now, she got what she wanted and John was in prison, yet she couldn't let it go. No. And when the opportunity arose, she had John executed because that's how the devil works. Mm -hmm. He just digs into us and digs and prods and prods. And Haman was in this position. And when he saw that Mordecai would not kneel down and pay him honour, he was enraged. And having learned who Mordecai's people were, that's the Jews, um, he scorned the idea of killing just Mordecai. He says, no, I'm going to kill them all. So Haman looked for a way to destroy all of Mordecai's people, all the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom of Xerxes. Yes, and we read that in Esther chapter 3. Now, those who know God's word will recognise that those who dig a pit for others will fall into that pit themselves. That's so true. Yes. So Haman arranged with the king to issue a decree to kill all the Jews. Haman said to King Xerxes, there is a certain people dispersed among the peoples in the provinces of your kingdom who keep themselves separate. Their customs are different from those of all other people and they do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. If it pleases the king, let a decree be issued to destroy them and I will give 10,000 talents of silver to the king's administrators for the royal treasury. Esther 3 verses 8 and 9. So the king took his signet ring um, from his finger that's a serious thing to do because yeah. w when a, a bill was passed in Persia in those days, it could not be repealed once that signet ring yeah, was... that was it. Yeah. And I think that's what happened with Queen Vashti earlier on. In the, in the beginning, yeah. they got the king to give an... You can't let Queen Vashti get away with it. All the women will be doing it across all the provinces. Put the king under pressure, he sealed it. And then later on, he was upset because he, yeah. he missed his queen. He did, yes, he, he did. He missed her, but he couldn't, she, she could never come into the king's presence again. That was the seriousness, and he knew it once that signet ring had gone out. So serious business here now, because mm. the, the king gives his signet ring to Haman and... We know what Haman's going to do with it. He's going to pass this law. Yes. So um, the king also said, keep the money, Haman, um, and do with the people as you please. 
See, there's a flippancy there, isn't oh, there? Oh, definitely. And, and just giving it away, isn't it a little bit like, you know, Jacob and Esau, and, and Esau, which we talked about recently, he just said, yeah, I have my birthright. What does it, giving things away so cheaply? Absolutely. And, and of course, the king was in this position now. Now, when Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes. He put on sackcloth and ashes and went into the city wailing loudly and bitterly. So we see that Mordecai was a passionate man and he cried out. I'm sure that he aimed his cries also, well, to the Lord actually. So Mordecai passed on a message to Esther telling her to go and see the king and plead for mercy. And that, es- yeah. yeah, that was a serious message. Oh, definitely, yeah. yes. And Esther sent a message back saying, All the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned by the king has but one law that they be put, put to, to death, death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to see the king. That's quite a long time, isn't it? 30 days. That's a long time. Yeah. Yes, it's a month. Yeah. So let's think about this. <laughs> the mama just is in a real predicament. Um, the king hasn't come for me for 30 days. Yeah. I can't just turn up. I, you know, anybody who does that will be killed. Yes. Unless the king hands out his royal scepter towards them. Now, we may think the Mordecai would say, OK, Esther, don't put yourself in danger. Mm. Um, things will work out somehow. Don't don't worry about it. But, but he, he did not say that. No, I was going to say, that's not what Mordecai said. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, she sent back this answer to him. Do not no, think... No, Mordecai sent the sent message. Sent the message back to... That's right, to, to Esther. Esther. <laughs> okay. Getting muddled up here now. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your family's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So there's a good prophecy from Mordecai. He tells it doesn't soft soap Esther here. Not at all. He is firm and points out her duty and that she needs to be strong here. And he says if she doesn't do it, Mm. salvation will arise from another place but you and your family will perish what a prophecy so Esther is putting is giving it straight to Esther now he loves Esther he cares for her but he realizes there is a higher law at work and Esther needs to comply to that higher law and so we, now, in the book of Esther, he, we don't see God mentioned in, in the no. book. And yet we feel his presence the whole way through the book, working behind the scenes, shaping and providing f- for situations just as he does in our lives. The book of Esther is there for us to see how the Lord works, the Holy Spirit maneuvering behind the scenes. So Esther was called to duty and she needed great courage. There was more going on here than the people could see outwardly. And we also ourselves need to be strong in Christ in the days in which we are living. God is working behind the scenes. He really is. And we need to be astute, don't we, and wise like Mordecai and understand what's happening. What's happening? behind the scenes what are the forces acting on the human race because there are forces we wrestle not against flesh and blood we should know these things as believers in christ we have been taught by the lord so 
Haman, the official who was enraged, he had a gallows set up and it, it was 50 cubits high. It was, it was tall. He wanted everybody to see this. And he was going to ask the king to have Mordecai hung on it. But that night the king couldn't sleep. And he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, so to be brought in and read to him, and found out that Mordecai had never been honoured for foiling the plan to assassinate the king. That's quite a big thing. It is. The, the assassination of a king. Um, so the Lord, we see here, again not mentioned, but what, not letting the king sleep, that's right. Get the book. Yeah. Read it to me. Yeah. So Haman, in the end of this little bit of the story, had the job of leading Mordecai through the streets of the city, honouring him as the man who the king had highly favoured. Now, Haman's advisers and family and wife, they said to him, this is not good. There's a, a, a wheel that started rolling. There's a process that's in motion here. And and since Mordecai, they said to Haman, before whom your downfall has started, is of Jewish origin, you cannot stand against him. You will surely come to ruin. So uh, they knew there was something about the Jews. Yeah. Those who try to... Uh, remove Jerusalem uh, um, hurt themselves the Bible says and um, you know Balaam he tried to curse the Jews when they were it, the children of Israel just come out of Egypt out of the wilderness he couldn't do it no. he, he could only um, bless them uh, so yes. we see here that the people in Persia knew about the Jewish people and you cannot stand against him you will come to ruin because their god was yahweh the maker of heaven and earth and sure enough when queen esther told the king what was truly going on he gave a command to hang haman on the gallows he had set up for mordecai so there we see the turnaround we do whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit they have made. The trouble they cause recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their own heads. These are fundamental laws of scripture that we are taught. Psalm 7 verses 14 to 16. So Mordecai, the Jew, uh, and uh, was actually raised high up in, as an official yeah. in the, the kingdom of Persia at that time. And this, the very last verse in Esther, Esther 10 verse 3, uh, Mordecai, the Jew, was second in rank to the king, King Xerxes preeminent among the Jews and held in high esteem by his many fellow Jews because he worked for the good of his people and spoke up for the welfare of all the Jews. And that's in Esther chapter 10 verse 3. Now not many of us have it in our power to do as much good as Mordecai but we all have power to do some good, some, don't we? Some good, yeah, yeah. That's correct. For sure. So we ought to do what we can do. And sometimes we are called, aren't we, like Esther, to make a stand and we ask the Lord gives us the courage yeah. at the right time. Not cowardice, but courage. So it is the Holy Spirit who makes us strong. Be strong! in the power of the Lord, Ephesians 6.10, and in his mighty power. 
So we know we're not strong by ourselves. And Abraham had a problem with fear, didn't he? Yeah. And it caused him to lead, lead him into deceit. We talked about that over the last few weeks. So we are not required to uh, to do what is not in our power or is unsuited to our station. But all believers in Christ are bound to live under the courage and the convictions of the saints of God whose examples are recorded for us in the Bible. They're there for a reason that we may read them, understand them, know them and follow the good example. And Mordecai is a great example for us today. Yes, you really love the Lord. You can really see that, can't you? Yeah, because when you think of the book of Esther, we always think about Esther. We do. But Mordecai is one of the central characters. He is. He <clears throat> had something for him to do. Yes. And he gave that message. And I just think it's wonderful how the Lord just... He was a trustworthy person. Yes. And God used him. We need trustworthy people, yeah, don't we? We do. And he was we, close to the Lord. He was close to the and Lord. And the Lord raised him up as an official he in did. the land. Yeah, he did. Yeah, okay, then. So, uh, uh, Lord God, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power. thank you that you work behind the scenes and we don't see you Lord but we know that you are working just like in the book of Esther you are not mentioned and yet we see you there and we see you in our own lives Lord and we thank you that you've given us this faith this trust in you and we do trust you Lord for all the ins and outs that go on in our lives we trust you for you are the one who leads the way. We are followers of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you lead us to a good place. You lead us to those still waters to restore our souls. So thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you for your leading and your guidance. And thank you for the examples we have in Scripture of good people yes. who do the will of the Lord. May we also do the will of the Lord in the days in which we live. Amen. Amen. And Father, we bring those who are needing that touch from you today. Lord, we bring the McGee family to you. We bring Ruth James, Kim's mum and Kim and Jason. We pray for Gary. We pray for Anita Stacy, And we pray for Kaylee and family. Father, we thank you this morning that nothing is too difficult for you. We thank you, Lord, that you are able. Amen. And we pray for these loved ones this morning that, Lord, you would renew their strength today in mind and body, that they will know a touch from you, that you will bring peace to them, we pray, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And maybe you're seeking some kind of direction today and you can't see the way, but the Lord does work behind the scenes. And I feel that God is saying that to someone today, that God is working out his purposes for you. Praise God. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Yes. So tell us about tonight, please, Paul, okay, on yeah. Zoom. Okay, Zoom at five o'clock. Please join us on Zoom. We can give you the login details and it's free to download yes. and it's easy to join So uh, into the meeting. 
Today, at five o'clock, Jeannie will be speaking about Psalm 136. And it's a beautiful psalm. It's a good psalm. Yeah, Yeah, it's got a repetitive line in it, but it's a great line. (laughs) So we'll look at that this evening. And on Monday, Sally and Dave, who come to Zoom, they will be having an interview with Jeannie. We've got this new kind of series called Introducing. And so it's a chance for people who are on Living Stance to tell us a little bit more about what the Lord has been doing in their lives. Yeah, that's wonderful, isn't it? And what's happening on Wednesday? On Wednesday, Lizzie will be taking the Bible study, nine o'clock Wednesday morning. And Lizzie is talking about... Can you take the Bible literally? Okay. Good title. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay then. And also on Friday, thank you for Shirley for your lovely interview there. Last Friday. Last Friday. And this Friday is Buddha. And I can tell you it's a great, magnificent memories from Buddha. It's a beautiful one. It really is. Yes. And next Sunday, we've got a new theme about messages in God's word. And we'll be looking at God's message of revelation and also we'll be having communion. So we hope that you'll be able to join us then as well. Communion next Sunday. Yes. First of the month we have communion, first Sunday. Okay, so we hope to see you later on Zoom. Okay, God bless brothers and sisters. God bless you. Bye. Bye for now.